The Limits tab of the Mailbox Database Properties has two main aspects to it that you really want to take note of. The first is Storage Limits. The second is Deletion Settings. In terms of storage limits, it's obvious that you may want to establish a limit in terms of the amount of storage they take up with their mailbox database. Storage is cheap, but when you're dealing with users in the thousands, you still need to keep an eye on it. So the way you would do this from the database perspective is you would establish storage limits from the database properties. Now you'll notice that you can issue warnings to the user when they reach one level, you can prohibit sending when they reach another, and then prohibit sending and receiving when they reach the final storage limit that you've established. The warning message interval will run daily at 1 a.m., but you can customize this if you like. Now sometimes it's difficult for an administrator to know exactly how much disk space you'll need. Gratefully there are calculators to assist us. You can search the internet for Exchange calculators, or you can go to the Exchange Team blog website where they'll provide you with one. Logically, you need to consider the number of users that you have, the amount of disk space you need to use, and then consider the amount of space left for deleted item and mailbox retention, for allowing plenty of space on the drive so that it can function properly. So there's all these little things that you have to take into consideration, and so a calculator is really the best way to go. Now down here we see deletion settings. Keep deleted items for so many days, the default is 14, and keep deleted mailboxes for so many days, the default is 30. Now what these settings are basically saying is that when a user deletes, let's say, some item in their mailbox, let's say they delete a few emails, usually they delete them and they go into the deleted items folder. But that's still a part of their mailbox. Once things are deleted out of the deleted items folder, where do they go? See, most people think that they're gone forever, but in fact, they're actually held onto for 14 more days according to the default settings. And you can change this to be fewer days or more days depending on what you need. For example, if your users need more time, you can extend it. If you need more disk space, you can reduce it. And what this means is that during this 14-day period, items that are completely deleted off the mailbox will still be held and can be retrieved. Once you pass this time period, you're looking at restoring from a backup. In addition, we have deleted mailboxes. This is great for a situation where let's say someone decides to leave the company and you delete their mailbox and then they come back before 30 days. Well, you don't have to go through the trouble of restoring from a backup. You can reinstate their mailbox because it's before the 30 day period. If it's past the 30 day period, well, then you're going to have to go through the trouble of restoring from a backup. Now, how do you ensure that you have a backup of all of this information? Well, this option here, do not permanently delete items until the database has been backed up. You can select this link if you need to. Ordinarily though, you shouldn't have a problem with this considering the fact that you probably do backups pretty regularly, not every 14 or 30 days. So we hope you found that helpful, and we'll see you in the next lesson.